Hello, we're on 333 of 365 Fear Knots for today. Um, we are going to be in 2 Kings 17. We're going to be covering 2 Kings 6 through 17. So we're going to be hitting a lot of stuff. So I hope that you're having a great day. I'm glad to be able to be able to meet with you guys. And I am hoping that you can learn something from today's message because it's pretty pertinent to today. So let's go ahead and open in prayer and see what you think. Lord, I just thank you for this day and I thank you for your word. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care about us. Thank you that your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even though it was written so many thousands of years ago, it's still good for us today. And Lord, I just ask that you would help us to understand it and apply it to our lives and understand how we are not so much different than people from before and that you still love us just the same. And I'm so grateful. And I just lift up this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So thanks for whoever's watching. And we are going to be starting in 2 Kings 6, 17. And then we're going to catch all the way up into today, which is 1734. So let's look at first, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. And from the rest of chapter 6, it talks about how Elijah, when we left off yesterday, Elijah's servant was was upset because he thought the army of the Aram Aram's army had surrounded them. But um, Elisha enlightened his servant and blinded the army of Aram and brought Israel peace. So when he enlightened his servant, his servant was able to see that the army of God was surrounding them and that they were fine. Um, when God blinded Aram's army, Elisha was able to lead them to Israel and when their sight was returned there they were standing in front of Israel where they were going to fight Israel and that brought peace between the two. So in chapter 6 and 7 we saw that Israel's king blames Elisha for Samaria's famine until the Lord lifts the Armenian siege and we see that you know when things go wrong it's always easy to blame God instead of maybe seeing you know maybe we should be doing something different instead of you know, not following after God. That's always a good thing. Um, in chapter 8, we see Elisha's servant Gehazi recalls the Shunammite son's resurrection, restoring her land from the king. Um, if you remember a few weeks back, we or a few days back, we had um, the Shunammite woman who had lost her son and Elisha resurrected him. And so because of that story, because of that witness, her land is returned to her after she returns from Egypt after the famine. Um, in chapter 8, also, Hazael murders Ben-Hadad, becoming next evil king, as Elisha prophesies. So, you know, sometimes you, you when you hear something and um, you're given that direction, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do <laughs> what you're not supposed to do. But there he was. He was uh, fulfilling everything God said he was going to do. And, and, you know, it's always your choice. You know, you can choose to do what God wants you to do or not, but... For him, he was uh, destined to be the one that murdered Ben-Hadad, and that was his thing. So the next king in chapter 8 was Jehoram, who became king of Judah at 32 years, and he was king for eight years, and he did evil in the sight of God. And then also in chapter 8, Ahaziah became king of Judah for one year, and he also did evil. And then we went over to chapter 9. So we're going to see a lot of that where people were, or kings were kings for short amounts of time or long amounts of time, but they were, they either did right in the eyes of God or they did evil in the eyes of God. And um, really there's only two ways to go, right? Um, but a lot of times these evil kings, they their, their reigns were short because they were so evil. Um, we see in chapter 9, Elisha sent a young prophet um, to anoint Jehu. Jehu, J-E-H-U, Jehu, and Israel king, and then he runs away because um, Jehu has to get started on his uh, his direction from God, I guess you could say. So at that point, Jehu has a, a direction that God has given him, and the direction is he needs to, because of their evil, he needs to kill Israel's king, he needs to kill Judah's king, and he needs to kill Jezebel. So, um, yeah, that's that's never a pleasant thing, but that's what he had to do, and he did what he was supposed to do. And so in chapter 10, Jehu reigned 28 years. He killed off Ahab's family and all of Baal's prophets. Thank you so much. Um, and then we see in chapter 11, Athaliah, 
Ahaziah's evil mother is killed by Jehoiada and Joash becomes king at eight years old. It's so funny that he would be able to become king at just eight years old and he was actually hidden for a long period of time because Athaliah was so evil she was just killing off everybody and so um, they actually hid him until she was able to be taken out of the scene and Joash was able to become king. And when he did become king, he did what was right. So in chapter 12, we see he reigned for 40 years and he repaired the temple. In chapter 13, Jehoshaphat, king of Israel, um, was king for 17 years. But then he did evil and then he sought favor from the Lord. And then it's amazing because the Lord allows him to have peace for Israel because he calls out to God even though he had done evil. So just because you do wrong doesn't mean that the Lord is never going to hear you again. It, it just means that it causes consequences and break in relationship. But, but he did. He called out and sought favor from God and God heard him. Um, in chapter 24, Amaziah at 25 years old reigned for 29 years. He did right in the eyes of the Lord, but he didn't follow after David and David was a man after God's own heart so though he did right he didn't do everything right he didn't take away all the wrong things that were supposed to be taken away and so that was not okay and that's why evil was still in the land so following him Jeroboam of Israel went 42 years and he did evil um, in chapter 15 Azariah of Judah at 16 reigned 52 years and he did what was right and you can see how you have a legacy when you do something right but then you have Zechariah of Israel who only reigned six months and he did evil. Uh, Shalom, king of Israel, reigned one month, one month. And Mahanahem reigned 10 years and he did evil in the sight of God and he was the king of Israel. So Israel's kings, as we can see here in chapter 15, um, from Zechariah, we have Shulam, we have Mahanahem, we have Bacaniah, we have Pekka. They all did evil in the sight of God. Like, just consec consecutive, run right after the other. Um, it takes us to the end of chapter 15, where we see Jotham of Judah at 25 years old, reigned 16 years, and he did right. But then we go on to uh, Ahaz of Judah, who reigned 20 years, and at 16, he did not do right. He reigned 16, he reigned 16 years, and he did not do right. So that was he was the king of Judah. So that takes us to finally to chapter 17. We were, that was a long recap. Um, we come to Hosea, who reigned nine years as the last king of Israel. And if you can remember, we went through a lot of kings of Israel, and literally almost all of them did evil in the sight of God. And Hosea was the last evil king. And then at that point, it takes us to our verse for today, which is 2 Kings 17.35. And if you wonder, hi, Sophia, if you wonder why Israel um, ended up the way they did, it's because of this. 2 Kings 17.35 that says, the Lord made a covenant with them and commanded them, do not fear other gods. Do not bow down to them. Do not serve them. Do not sacrifice to them. And what did they do? Every single time, every time you turn around, they did what was wrong. They did evil. They bowed down to these idols. They served them. They sacrificed and they feared them. And, you know, you may not think the fearing part is a big deal, like, you know, but it is because you only fear what you are worshiping fear always demands worship fear is a, is a form of worship because your mind and your heart and your thoughts are consumed with those things that you fear so because they feared these other gods because they bowed down to them literally they served them literally and they sacrificed to them even their children literally and so you know we may think well we don't sacrifice or, or do these things to idols now well we do and you put fear as a primary factor in your life or you put others or you put your job or you put all of the things going on around you that take the place of God in place of God those become idols in your life and fear always this is our principle fear always demands worship never yield to it you know, it's your choice to yield to fear. You don't have to yield to fear. Does that mean that I never am afraid of anything? No, that's not the case. I am human. I fall short. I fail. I absolutely have things that I have been fearful of. But when it comes down to it and you, you get back in the word and you get in prayer and you think about this thing that you're fearful about, 
you can come back to God who is your foundation and understand that I don't have to yield to this. And then it comes to our prayer for today that says, in Jesus' name, I will not submit or live enslaved to fear. So we have everything we need to be able to overcome fear. We have Jesus' name. We have the power of his Holy Spirit. We have the word that we can stand on. And we do not need to submit to fear. And in Jesus' name, we can overcome it and we can not be slaves to it. And so it's the same command for the Israelites as it is for us. Don't fear other gods. Don't bow down to other gods. Don't serve them. Don't sacrifice to them. And anything you put in the place of God, even fear, becomes an idol. And and that's not deserving of God's worship. Only God is deserving of this worship, right? So I hope you see how even though we went through all these evil kings and, oh, look at how bad they were. Honestly, we're no different and we fall short and fail too. So don't point your fingers so much at others and look more at what's going on with you. So hopefully that's not pertinent to you, right? And when you do fall short and you do fail and you do fear and you do, you know, see something that you just don't see how you can not, take a step back and call in the name of Jesus and let him know that you need him right there and there he is. So I hope this is a blessing to you today. I hope you see how you may have something in your life that's causing you to fear that you don't need to have there because God is greater. So thanks so much. And I look forward to seeing you tonight with Jimmy and I on your step with me on our live stream at nine o'clock on our group. And if not, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks so much. God bless.